Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll teach you how to upload file in ASP.NET Core. So we'll start by adding a controller to our project. I am selecting the empty controller option. I am setting the name as home controller. Now the controller is ready. First we'll move to the view so that we can add the HTML of the file upload and the button. So let's add a view to the project. I'll right click inside the action result method and select the add view option from the context menu. Here I am selecting the view without any model. Directly click on add. So the view is ready. First I'll inherit the tag helper classes of the ASP.NET Core. Now I'm adding a form to the project. I'm setting the method as post. Now I'm setting the encryption type to multi-part form data. This particular attribute is very necessary when you are uploading a file using the form. Now I'm making use of razor tags and setting the name of the controller using the ASP controller attribute. The next attribute is ASP action where I'll be setting the name of the action result method which will be handling this particular post call. This particular span is used as a label for the file upload control. Now I'll be adding a file upload control input type equal to file which will be used to select and upload the file to the server. Here I am setting the attribute multiple which is an HTML5 attribute for the input type equal to file. Using the multiple attribute we can select and upload multiple files on a single button click. The next thing I am adding is a input type equal to submit. In other words a submit button which will be used to submit the form to the controller's action result method. Now let's move back to the controller where we'll be writing the code for uploading and saving the file. Here we'll start by adding the namespaces. So the first namespace is system.io. It will be required for saving the file and for file and directory operations. The next namespace is microsoft.aspnetcore.http. This particular namespace is required for the iform file interface, which is required for holding the uploaded file. Finally, the third namespace is microsoft.aspnetcore dot hosting. This particular namespace is required for the iHosting environment interface. This particular interface is used for accessing the www root folder. Inside the www root folder, we'll be saving the files. Now here I am creating a private property for iHosting environment interface, which I'll be using throughout the controller. Now I'm creating a constructor for the home controller and I'm passing the iHosting environment object to it. Inside the constructor, I'll be setting the private property with the object of the iHosting environment which is passed as a parameter. This process is known as dependency injection and it is used in all the ASP.NET Core projects where we need to access the www root folder. So this is the action result method which will handle the uploading of files. This particular action method will accept a collection of iform file objects as parameter. As in this particular example, I'm uploading multiple files. In case you are uploading single file, then you can use a single object rather than a collection. So in the very first line, I'm creating a variable where I'll be fetching the path of the www root folder from the iHosting environment interface. Now I'm making use of another variable. In this particular variable, I'll be combining the path of the www root folder along with the path of the uploads folder. Now the uploads folder is the folder or directory where 
will be storing the files which are being uploaded. So instead of concatenating it multiple times, I am creating a variable and doing it only once. Now I am adding a if condition for directory existence, which means I'll be checking whether the directory uploads exists. If it does not, then the code will create it. Before moving ahead, I would like to inform you that an article has already been posted on this topic. The link for the article and the code sample are available in the description. Also, if you need any further help, feel free to ask on forums. The link for the forum is also available in the description. Now I am using a for each loop to traverse through the collection of the files and one by one inside the for each loop, the file will be saved. Now I am fetching the file name using the path.getFileName function and storing it into a variable. Now for saving the file, I am making use of file stream class. I'll be using the file stream class to create the file in the location. As you can see, in the very first parameter where the file path is passed, I am combining the path of the folder with the file name and I am setting the mode as create, which means I need to create the file. Now inside the using block, I am setting a view back object. This particular view back object will be used to display the details of the uploaded file to the user. So here I'll be setting the name of the file which is being saved at present. Finally, I am copying the file to the stream which completes the file saving operation. In the end, the view function is written which completes the action result method. Now let's move to the top of the action result method where I'll be adding two attributes which are very important. First one is HTTP POST, which means this particular action result method will handle the POST call. The second one is REQUEST FORM LIMITS. This particular attribute is used to increase the default file size limit, which is of 28 MB. Here we need to set the file size limit in bytes. Example, right now I am setting the file size limit as 100 MB. So this number in bytes is actually 100 MB. So this completes our controller part. Let's move back to the view where we'll write the code for displaying the message to the user. I am making use of an HTML span to which I have set the color as green. Now I'm making use of raw function of the HTML helper class and to the raw function I am passing the message view back object. The HTML raw function is used to display the HTML contained in raw format. Otherwise, it will be encoded and will not be displayed properly. There is one more place where we need to update the file size limit, which is the web.config file. Though in ASP.NET Core, there is no need of web.config file, but for this particular reason, we'll have to add one. So let's add a web.config file to the project. Now first I'll remove this commented part. So the very first node is system.webserver. Inside the system.webserver, the child node is security node and inside the security node, we need to use the request filtering node. And finally, inside the request filtering node, we need to make use of the request limits node, which has a property named max allowed content length. Here also I am setting the file size limit as 100 MB and it is specified in bytes. Finally, our complete application is ready. Now we can run it and see it in action. So as you can see, the file upload as well as the button is visible. So I am selecting file and I'll click on the upload button. As you can see, the file has been uploaded successfully. So with this, we come to the end of this video. 
so today we learned how to upload file in ispro.net core thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon goodbye